What's up, party people? So you're looking for an adult Bible study class near you, but you can't find one? I got you covered with a few options to get you into a community of believers who want to study the Bible. So I've noticed a few issues people run into consistently when they can't find a Bible study. Whether it's that the church they go to has small groups that are more like hanging out than Bible studies, or the Bible studies are at times that conflict with other uh, things going on in your life, or the worst situation where you actually aren't even a member of a local church and don't know what's available. So in order of ease of fixing these problems, if you don't have a home church, go get one. Seriously, there are a lot of people who want to study the Bible and aren't even a part of a church community. And while I would never want to discourage people from reading and learning the Bible, I do think it's an important thing. If you're reading and studying the Bible, the Bible literally tells you to be in community with other believers. So go do that first. If you're worried about finding a church with wishy-washy theology or ideas about God and you want to make sure that they're strong biblical churches, then there are some links below to help you find some reformed churches. Uh, these are good denominations, Bible-believing denominations that are going to stick to the Word of God. If you use those and there's still not a church around you, then you can just start going to local churches, okay? You'll, you know, ask them about what they have when it comes to Bible studies but go find a local church and be in community with them. Obviously, you wanna avoid any church that has a woman preaching or is flying a rainbow flag, but there are bonus points uh, for any churches that are confessional. So if they follow the 1689 Baptist Confession or the Westminster Confession, Heidelberg Confession, any of these confessions are a good starting point. So the next issue we'll talk about, if you can't find a Bible study because of scheduling conflicts, then there are some creative solutions that you can use to find a Bible study that works for you. As a start with any issue in your church, talk to your pastor first, okay? Let him know uh, and see what he has to say. He may be able to help you out. I'll be honest with you, the church I go to is a bit of a drive for me, so some of the early morning or evening events can be kind of tough to get to, but I prioritize a couple of groups to make sure I'm tied into the, the church community there and being able to study the Bible in community with other believers. And so I'm gonna get this one out of the way as well, but honestly, one way to solve this issue is for you to just rearrange your schedule. So if your schedule is packed full of things, then I dare say you're being a bit worldly with your time. The world will pack your schedule full of all different kinds of things, and they seem like valuable things, and they are good things a lot of times, whether it's sports for your kids, working out, um, you know, all these different things that, you, that come up in the schedule. But if you have time to prioritize sports and school events and video games and working out and dating and hanging out with your friends, then if you're doing those things regularly and you're not in a Bible study, then it's just a matter of priorities. I'm just going to say it. I'm not saying any of those things are bad and I'm not getting on your case or judging you for it, but you should ask yourself and really be honest about evaluating if you're simply just not prioritizing your church community the way that, the, that you should. And this is a pretty common thing I see. I think people that they're doing a lot of good things for their family and communities. And so they think that that's an, a good excuse to not go to a Bible study or not regularly attend church. And that's just not the case. But if you do ask yourself that and you're just saying, you know, it's busy, but my church doesn't have a lot of options and I would really still like to find a Bible study. Uh, this is why I actually prefer refer, reformed churches, because uh, if you're a reformed church, then you know that you're going to be in the ballpark of good biblical teaching. And so it's kind of like uh, if you go and ask your pastor about churches in the neighborhood that might have other Bible studies, or if you go to another reformed church, you know that they're going to be reinforcing the same biblical concepts that you would be learning at your church and in a broader community context. It really can help build a bridge there. Um, that These ideas there are essential doctrines of the faith, and even being around other ideas that aren't exactly like yours can help you solidify your own beliefs. So talk to your pastor about nearby ch uh, churches that are pretty solid, that are Bible-believing churches that they know. Maybe they know some pastors and would be able to you know, get you in touch with somebody uh, at a different church when, and see if you would be able to join a Bible study at their church. However, before you do that, I would highly encourage you to, while you're talking to your pastor, just ask if anybody's expressed interest in starting a Bible study. 
oftentimes there are people in a church that they don't know how to get connected with people to start a Bible study. And so you could see if there's somebody interested in that, that the, the pastor thinks is a good fit uh, for beginning a ministry like a Bible study and see if there's a compatible time slot there during the week. And the last thing you can do is if, if your church, if you feel comfortable doing it, maybe you talk to your pastor about starting a Bible study. Obviously, you will know when you're available and there may be other people who are a little bit more flexible in their timing. So maybe it's something where you could get an approved curriculum. Uh, I really like the Knowing the Bible series from Crossway. But if you pick one of these bad boys up, all you basically have to do is read the book of the Bible and then ask these questions. And then you could even write down questions that you're not sure of. Um, and you know, take them to other elders or, or pastors in your churches. It's a great way to get conversations started about that. But if you feel comfortable doing that, talk with your pastor and see if that's an option as well. And if that doesn't work out, if that is just too much, another option is to talk with your neighbors. This is a great way to get to know your neighborhood. I found out that there were a few people in my neighborhood that were believers by attempting to do this. Now, in full disclosure, I tried to do this. I didn't get it off the ground, okay? Honestly, I need to take a little bit of my own um, medicine here because it was it was a bunch of scheduling conflicts. So I definitely understand. I'm not perfect in this regard. I'm just offering some advice and some different things that I've seen work in other people's uh, experiences. So starting a neighborhood Bible study, again, these books are like six or seven, eight dollars, I think. I think some of them might be ten dollars. Okay, but talk with your pastor about a curriculum that you could use and just get some people together in your neighborhood and pick a night during the week that you're free and uh, get something started. I totally understand that a good Bible study can be hard to find that works with your schedule. And a lot of times people that we want to study the Bible with just aren't available at the same times. And we're busier than ever. And so one, I would encourage you, that is one of the biggest ways that we can stand out from the world is how we prioritize our schedule and our time. And I've just found that so many people are being worldly with how they run their schedule. So taking a step back and reorganizing your schedule might be the answer. But if you have all these other commitments that you're running through, but you don't want to wait, then I think I've laid out a few different options that could potentially help you with busy schedules to, to kind of make it work or figure out um, how to get into a Bible study. Don't give up on it. Keep trying to find a Bible study. I'm glad that it's something that's on your mind and that you're convicted to learn more about God's word. And as you can see, it's, it's kind of an issue of priorities and how we prioritize our lives. I think this is an area where the consumer mentality has really crept into the church and really caught up with us. So I'm really glad that you're watching this video and saying, you know what, I want to study the Bible more and I want to make it more of a priority in my life. So good on you for that. So with that, I'll, I'll let you go and uh, thanks for hanging out today. I'm really going to be encouraging, uh, praying for you, and I would encourage you to, you know, find a Bible study that works for you and read the Bible with your family in the meantime. You know, do what you can while you can, but always be looking to deepen that connection with your faith community, and that is really what is going to be a big impact on, on our country and in our lives in the, the upcoming few years, I think. I think we're, we've been given a great opportunity here where people are interested in God's word and they want to know more about God. So take that opportunity. Get out there with your neighbors. Get out there and study the Bible with your faith, uh, your local church. And uh, yeah, I'll talk with you soon. Peace.